This is my patient Stephanie. Stephanie comes from Baldwin Park, which is about an hour, hour and a half yeah. from Ventura. She found me on YouTube. I'm always a little shocked that patients make that drive because I think there's a lot of great practitioners in between, but I'm very happy she found me. This video is an educational video. It's specifically designed for chiropractors, people considering getting into chiropractic, patients who are looking at the different styles that the chiropractors employ. Chiropractic is a big umbrella and there's a lot of different systems within that umbrella. In this video, we'll be discussing our patient, Stephanie. We're gonna talk about her examination, her treatment. We're gonna discuss patterns, why certain patterns take place. Yeah, good. Uh, my neck feels better, a lot better. My my hip is, and I, I forgot to tell you this last time, but it, it makes this cracking noise. Okay. Uh, it is like a pop. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. not really a crack, it's a yeah. pop. But it will do it every time I pick my leg up to like to the side. Yeah, it might be a tendon going over a bone. Okay. Um, but uh, my jaw's better. It's, it still kind of feels like it's loose in another way now. Where, or not loose, but like... It, it just hinged a little different. Yeah. But it is better. It's well, maybe we'll adjust the other side today. Yeah, I also feel like my ch uh, my like shoulders are wider, like, but in a good way. Like, uh, I don't know, like my chest opened up or something better. Yeah, like probably it's easier to stand up right a little. Yeah. Easier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot lighter. And I feel like I'm less like hunched back, even just when I'm sitting, because naturally I really hunch a lot. But yeah, it's like nothing. I've uh, I have never visited a chiropractor like this at all way more thorough it's way more uh, like you can feel you feel better immediately but like over um, yesterday all night I felt way better I did sleep better um, yes yeah, weird like you don't realize how messed up you are until you fix it or like yesterday with the calming like, yeah I felt so much calmer um, but I didn't realize that I needed that so that's been amazing it's been worth the drive for sure <laughs> and I I think because I, I can't, I'm pretty in tune with my body too, like, just with, I, I've been injured so many times that I kind of, you know, know when, where it hurts or whatever, but this is like, I don't know, it's different. I feel like you, like, I know it hurts, but you know how to fix it. So it's totally different. You can check, it's not just one area, you know, you can check this and tell you something about that and that. And so I, maybe I can fix one thing with the foam roller, but not like actually fix it. And so I think that's the biggest. Our style here, we try to incorporate all the different reflexes and different... Right. You know. Well, and that's kind of, you take a more holistic approach, which is kind of which was what I was looking for. Like, it is, it is muscles, but it's also, like, the spine, obviously, it's the nerves, it's the, it's everything in one. And usually, the other chiropractors just treat, like, one area. So it's like, yeah, I mean, it's better, but I wouldn't say I've ever felt this good, like, after any one of those adjustments, you know. Worth the drive. Thank you. So. I would like to acknowledge my chiropractic guru, Dr. Michael Allen, for taking the time to train me many years ago, and your work still carries on today. Thanks, Doc. Yes, it's great. As with everything in life, there are patterns. And so watching any practitioner for a while, you start to observe the patterns that they do. These are the patterns I look for in my office. Does a patient have all their muscles weak? Do they have one muscle weak? Are muscles weak on one half of the body? Are they weak on one half of the upper torso and the opposite half of the lower torso? What happens when a patient turns their head right, incorporating the tonic neck reflexes, or to the left? When a patient turns their head right, we should have facilitation of the right lat, right glute med, left pectoralis major. We should have inhibition of the right pectoralis major, inhibition of the left latissimus dorsi, and of the left glute medius. So that's another pattern. So here's a picture, just simply representing it in a simple format. The muscles in green should facilitate with right head turn, and the muscles in red should be inhibited with the right head turn. And that rotates when the head goes left, all those colors would switch. What about when we incorporate primitive reflexes? Flexor with jaw reflex, deep tendon reflex. So when I'm doing any exam, and treatment and having the patient walk and stress themselves and then get back on the table. I'm trying to initially look for patterns, render a treatment, 
stress the system, and see if the system holds when we put the patient back on the table. Pull towards your head. Great. Quad, flexor, draw. Okay. Try this. Don't let me pull. <clears throat> Turn your head to the left. Bend this knee. Don't let me pull. Okay, there it is. Try again. Go. All right. <laughs> So in this picture, we're looking at the view of the brain and something called the cerebellum. And you have a cerebellum on the left and you have a cerebellum on the right. In this picture, the cerebellum on the left is the only one shown. Initially, when we did the muscle test with the hip flexor, the muscle was strong. However, when I had Stephanie turn her head to the left, that activated the left cerebellum, which fired into the right red nucleus, which fired down into the left hip flexor, which through something called reciprocal inhibition inhibited the right hip flexor. And so when I tested it here, we saw this inhibition take place. This should not happen. So what that told me was I was gonna stay predominantly on Stephanie's right side while doing treatments and adjustments. Then we could fire up into the right cerebellum. After looking at which level in the cervical spine to adjust, I determined that C1 was the area. So we gave some mobilization to C1 and we went back and checked Stephanie's reflexes. They all remained good. So that's the level of the cervical spine that I'm going to adjust. The pattern that Stephanie displayed on the table was a right pec major and a right latissimus dorsi that were inhibited. She had a right hip flexor that was inhibited with the left head turn. She also had bilateral hamstring weakness. From a chiropractic neurological model, I should have adjusted the ilium on the left. However, her hamstring muscles did not facilitate without a sacrum challenge. So this is why I did the sacrum instead of the ilium. Those of you who are chiropractors know that there are many different theories when it comes to chiropractic. For me, the theory I subscribe to is, is I'm looking for the one segment in the cervical spine that will facilitate all the reflexes to being normal so that all the muscles will work properly, all the reflexes and the tonic neck reflexes will display normally. I want to minimize the adjustments. If we do too much adjusting, we will exceed the metabolic capacity of the neuron meaning the neuron will overfire in the process it will secrete too much glutamate. If it does that, too much calcium will come into the neuron. It will release glutamate into surrounding tissues, which will hit the NMDA receptors on other neurons. We wanna keep the adjustments within the metabolic capacity of the patient's brain's ability to handle those adjustments. Most of my patients, you'll see me adjusting the feet or the fifth metatarsal or the calcaneus or there's something within their foot or knee. The reason for that is that if you have a joint that's disarticulating anywhere in the foot and you're taking 10,000 steps a day, that means you're taking in 10,000 abnormal proprioceptive signals every day. Remember, we're talking about neuronal plasticity at the core of chiropractic. Neuronal plasticity can be positive. It can also be negative. Abnormalities in input cause the nervous system to be dysregulated or regulated in proper manner. How do you feel? My hands feel way lighter. Okay. Like, oh, that was nice. <laughs> oh. I walk around. Well, that was good. <laughs> oh man. So that once again, our goal with chiropractic is to find areas of disarticulation or dysfunction, whether it's a muscle or a joint or a reflex or some type of proprioceptive input, fire up that pathway, try to get the normal display of the human body in the way it was designed to work, that we can increase the function of the nervous system and not only help patients get better control, better balance, better proprioceptive inputs and therefore outputs to control their body, Theoretically, 90% of the brain's output also deals with autonomics. So if we can do the correct input, we can help the brain calm down by activating the pontomedullary reticular formation and in the process inhibit the intermedial lateral cell column, which sits on top of the spinal chain ganglia and inhibit the stress response. And this is how chiropractic, when done pro appropriately, can calm down patients. That's actually what I always try to do when it hurts, is I try to crack this way. Like this, but in my back. It does crack in there. But you did way better and different. Well, you can't get the leverage. Yeah. Now go walk and see yeah. yeah. Way better. I feel like I can actually like lift my arm. 
Because I could tell a difference. Yeah, that's way better. Yeah, it was like in here that you cracked it. Deep yeah. in there. Yeah. Okay. Way better. Okay. Yeah. So here in closing, I'm re-examining Stephanie again, and I'm checking all her main muscle groups with her head in the neutral position, then I'll check her cross cord reflexes, her flexor withdrawal reflex, her tonic neck reflexes, and I want to make certain that she's normal, that everything that she's displaying is appropriate. And that tells me that the inputs and the outputs from the body to the brain, back to the body, are appropriate in this session and that I've done my job as a practitioner to try to facilitate her care. Steph, go walk and see how you feel. The test for the legs? Uh -huh. The first one felt like it was pulling, but this is, and now it feels, like the second time that you did it, way better. Yeah, like I don't really have pain here anymore. And up here too, because sometimes I get on the, like the sides. Better than your $69 maintenance? Oh yeah. <laughs> Hands down. <laughs> yeah, so much better.